In this panoramic puppet warp presentation, I'm going to demonstrate some new features found here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5, and in particular, puppet warp, and how you might apply this, in this case, to this panorama that has a bit of a warping problem that I'd like to solve easily and quickly and precisely with this new tool. Okay, let's get started. To begin with, I'm going to bring up my rulers. That's Command R on the Macintosh or Control R on the PC to bring up my rulers, just like this. Then I can click here within my rulers and drag a grid line from my rulers right into position because I want to see how far off and how distorted these columns are. So I'm going to bring a second one in right here into the middle. Aha! We can clearly see over here as we zoom in that there's a problem. If I keep my center column as our base column, that's the one we want to tie the others to, then I can come in here and distort this and correct this. Okay, now let's go up here to the Edit menu and down here to Puppet Warp right here. Now in a project like this, I'm going to change the density to more points. I find I get my best results by bringing in more points into this process for more accuracy. Then let's turn off the mesh because we don't need to see that anymore. And in a project like this, I have some tips and techniques. I want to bring these columns down into alignment, but don't always select right on the edge of an area that you're distorting. In this particular case, I'm going to set my pin right up here within the structure of the building, right there. Those are the areas that I'm going to distort down. But I also need to put in some control points so that my image doesn't move in other locations where I don't want it to move. So I'm going to set up a base down here at the bottom because this looks pretty solid down here at the bottom. My grid line shows here that it's looking pretty horizontal there. And I can come through and put in a pin in each of those locations. So that's locked down. It's this upper region that I want to distort. So I go through and I put in a pin right here, just like that. By placing the pins in the center of this architectural structure, I'm going to bring the entire structure down and distort it as a group. Let's give this a try. And here's one of my favorite tips and techniques. By selecting this point in this location, I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to drop this down. I'm clicking this with a single nudge, but if I hold down the shift key, of course, I can drop this in larger increments and bring this down just like this. Check it out. I brought that first column down. Let's bring the second column down. And you know, I notice a little bit of shift to the right. I'm going to use my left arrow to nudge this a little bit to the left. So I can do not only a little bit of a horizontal correction, but a little bit of vertical correction as I go through each one of these columns. Let's slide on over and continue our process. Remember the shift key and the down arrow key on my keyboard and notice how it's bringing the entire architectural structure down and into position and it's bending all of the parts down so I have a better more realistic distortion. Let's bring this final one down here as well just like this. I notice a little bit of vertical distortion. I'm going to go back to this point and move that one to a little bit to the right. Let's scroll on over and see how I'm doing. That looks great. Perfect alignment. I can go in and make other adjustments if I needed to for the project like this. Oops, I forgot one over here. Let's click right here. Let's bring this final one down into position like this. And you know what? This one might need a little bit of rotation. I'm going to hold down my Option key on my Macintosh or my Alt key on my PC. Then I'm going to move in close proximity to this point. And then if I click and hold and move to the left, I can give it a slight rotation. Did you see that? So a little bit of rotation on that final one and maybe just one more drop with my down arrow key to nudge that one down into position. This looks great. Let's check it out. Just make sure I got all of my points. Fantastic. Let's then zoom back out a bit. Then let's hit our Enter key 
to resolve the transformation. There it is. Let's hide our guides just like that, and we can see this really, really nice. I've gone in and distorted it accurately with Puppet Warp. But you know what? Something that's just glaring at me that needs to be fixed, and that's this transparency. Sometimes when you merge multiple images together, and in this case, I use the cylindrical distortion feature when I created the panorama. And it's left these gaps in the transparency all the way around. Let's just solve this with another great feature here in Photoshop CS5. I'm going to hold down my Command key on the Macintosh or my Control key on the PC and click here on this layer. It then loads the transparency. Then from the Select menu, let's inverse the selection so we have a selection of the area that we want to fill. And in this case, I'm going to use Content Aware Fill to fill in these areas magically. Check this out. I'm now going to the Select menu. I need to modify my selection and expand it a bit. I need to expand it about 20 pixels in this particular case. I get different results based upon this overlap. Run some experiments. Okay, here we go. Our background is selected. We select the Shift key and the Delete key, which automatically brings up our Fill dialog. I've selected Content Aware right here, and I just click OK. It should now go through and fill that area with the surrounding texture, and it will try and grow into these areas with the tile and the surrounding structure of the building. Wow, there it is. It's done. Let's hide the selection, and let's zoom back out so we can see our finished results. It's not perfect, but it's really close. It's a great start. I could go back in with my clone tools and touch up the edges just a bit more. But what have we just done? We've straightened our horizon line and even corrected some of our vertical errors in the process of merging together a panorama. And then finally, we cleaned up the edges by using the new Content Aware Fill feature. Give these new features a try.